first of all, uh, I'd like everybody to, to uh, talk to me, address me as Anita. I feel more comfortable, feel less old than that. <laughs> uh, so my background, as somebody very generously talked about, I'm sorry I missed your name. Okay, good. Nice name. So uh, is that uh, after I graduated from Mahapilani, I didn't think I should do MBA. Maybe at that time MBAs were really not the fad, right? This was way back in 1985. So now you know as to why I want you to call me Anita. <laughs> um, so at that time, uh, we didn't really know about MBA, MBAs. I didn't even know what kind of job I wanted to get into. All that I knew was that he had companies who were coming on campus, so decided I'll just go into. So Wipro came to campus. So that was a natural choice for me to get in over there. And uh, then they asked me, system software or application software? And I blinked. Right? Just like if you have questions about, you know, some marketing and other sets, et cetera, et cetera, that's very obvious. So I just decided on this for it because you can't sound dumb. So I said applications, right? After I came out and somebody else who had taken systems said, you know what, systems jobs pay you more. Right? So I said, now what? I can't go back to it. I said, no, 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 I <laughs> So I was stuck with it. But I made the most of it, I think. Right? So I went into application development, enjoyed myself. It was very customer facing. Um, I didn't know what to expect in my first job though, right? Just like, again, all of you. Yeah, there were lots of questions over here in the morning discussion, interesting uh, discussions. So my boss told me, uh, you know, go to this Ministry of Defense and you have to train people and start up the system for the first time. I had not even seen the system, forget about anything else, right? All that I had seen were big mainframes in bits, right? Because that time there were no laptops, there were no PCs at that time. So I was scared, of course, went in there, saw it, saw this big, you know, big piece of instrument lying there, I didn't know what to do with it. Uh, but anyway, you know, managed somehow, there are some seniors there. You have to assume that, you know, they will always be there to help you as you get into your first job. So I did that. I uh, went into doing uh, application software development. Um, but after about four years, five years, right? And please remember, I spent four or five years at Wipro and I enjoyed what I was doing. Otherwise, I would not have continued to do that. Um, I made the most of it because I picked up difficult assignments also. There were some in which the project manager left and we had a customer account going on. There was nobody else. So went through all that too. Uh, you have to you know, be strong enough and just survive. Somebody is asking about, you know, one is to get a job and is it more difficult to survive with a job later on? Of course, it is very difficult. But can you make the most of it is what will differentiate you and the others. Um, so beyond that, I've taken up multiple different kinds of roles because I wanted to evolve with the evolving industry. So uh, that's another thing as a takeaway which we'll talk about later. But let's just talk about the digital, the, the dividend first, right? the demographic dividend. Um, anybody wants to talk about what is a demographic dividend? You have studied something, you have you know, Google, right? When we talk about demographic dividend, it is about the kind of population we have which is good enough to convert that into a potential to generate, uh, let's just say, resources for the country. That is what uh, is dividend. We earn dividend on the kind of population we have. It's an asset, right? Yeah. It should be an asset. The dividend has to be an asset and not a liability. Uh, uh, how does this come about? Why can't every country say I have this dividend? Um, because of the kind of population they have. Since India has uh, one which is moving towards a uh, uh, more mature population between 25 and 35. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of age where you utilize uh, maximum your okay. population. Okay. That is why. So uh, let's just step back into also how does this come about? How did India get to this stage and why is it that we did not get to it earlier? When I was in school or my college days, why was India not in that stage? Why do you think so? Why is it happening or going to happen now? Population is increasing. If population increases, then does that cause the demographic dividend off the sort they've talked about? Then that would be a liability, isn't it? If population keeps on increasing and you have a drain on the country, would that be a dividend? happen yes you're right that you know it does happen when the you know, population is more and then the demand supply gap but when you talk about the dividend part um, 
we'll wait for the slides to come on. But anyway, before that, is that uh, you know, countries put in a lot of uh, effort, I would say, along with uh, education, etc. That comes up. Is that population once it starts decreasing, not increasing, but decreasing, <coughs> and your average life expectancy also increases. Right now, you can see that you know our parents, our grandparents, etc., are living more than what earlier times it used to be because of general awareness, general <coughs> infrastructure, and availability of funds to take care of you know, people who fall sick. So a lot of things factors go into that. So along with the average life expectancy becoming higher, uh, and the population also decreasing, it's not an immediate thing that happens. There's a gradual process that sets in like this. Right? So there's a lag in between, during which time there is a bulge in the society. Okay? During that bulge time, that's when you find the demand supply gaps that happen. Okay? But once it starts becoming um, lesser in the sense that there is this shift as we call it. So this is a window of opportunity that we talked about, right? Somebody there at the end. I didn't catch your name that time. I'm Rohit Jaitley. Rohit, okay. Rohit talked about it that that's a time when there will be economic growth also that will happen when the demographic dividend starts paying you. Uh, it's caused due to the gradual decline <coughs> in population that we talked about and increase in the average life expectancy. Okay? There's a lag, as we said, because it's not immediate. You know, from tomorrow I can't say my population are decreasing. It's gradual. Till the time that that happens, it settles down. There is a bulge in the society, which is a drag. Okay. Um, eventually, that bulge in the society, that whole population, enters productive workforce. And that's as uh, what Vidya said, right? You people are the ones that are going to lead India into this demographic dividend to uh, to earn us the benefits. Okay, it is not people here on this little panel, but it's going to be you. Okay. So what what happens at that time is that you all will have fewer dependents. Okay. And because of the low population, that will because the, that's going to keep decreasing. There'll be lower older generation dependence that you will have, right? <coughs> Therefore, the demographic <coughs> dividend sets in, and that's the time when not just the country, of course, what's the country, right? It's all, all of us put together. So, along with the effective public policies, that's very important. You know, so I was talking to Ranjan earlier that unless that happens, we will not end cash on the dividend that we're sitting on, right? So, let's assume politics, etc. side that, you know, everybody else does well and, you know, we can end cash on it. <coughs> then the public policies, if they're right, then there'll be tremendous growth because India is going to be leading this and economic well-being for everybody, each one of us. Let's look at how it happened. Japan went through this earlier, but they have now a workforce reducing since 1995. Their productive workforce is reducing now. Therefore, they have a very quickly aging population less number of working people. So you see the economy of Japan, which was considered to be really at the helm, going down. Korea will start reducing <coughs> by 2015. China, and China had policies of one child per family, etc. They put in a lot of efforts to do this, but they will peak by 2013. And after that, there will be a substantial decline. So what about India? Right? What do you think? So we talked about that, you know, India, there's a generation that's uh, you know that's you so that's the good news right all of you are the good news um, India will surpass China by 2025 to be the leading populous country of course more population does not necessarily mean good news they have to be working so that's a good part is that with the increased labor supply if and only if we can absorb it productively there will be new new job opportunities that will be created uh, greater savings potentials for each one of you. Why is that so? You'll of course be earning in the new jobs, but you'll also have lesser dependence. Therefore, you will have more monies to spend for yourself and to go shopping. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, you can spend more on health and education for your fewer children because the population <coughs> growth is going to be lesser. Right? So therefore, <coughs> Ultimately, you're going to be benefiting the whole lot compared to anybody else in India, right, so far. Uh, of course, you all will contribute additional 2% to the capital uh, GDP. Yeah. So that's the backdrop, really, in terms of what is demographic dividend, how did it come about. The good news is that whether you thought about it or not, you are there. Right? 
actual cash. <coughs> so let's just look at some more good stuff. By 2020, you know, uh, in the previous discussion, Pura talked about it that this company has got a 23 to 24 year average, uh, you know, person right? employment age. Uh, in the whole of India, the working age in 2020 is going to be an average of 29. <coughs> right? And I'm assuming that you people will be about 29 by that time, right? About there. So that's when we say that you know you are, you know, going to carry this forward. China it will be 37. Western Europe 45 and Japan 48. So when you look at it, what does that mean? Is that those countries are aging. They will not be as productive on the jobs, and those jobs will be transferred into India, and they'll not be the jobs that somebody else had a question about, which says the monotonous jobs that are thrown back into India, etc. They will be the jobs that those guys were doing, but now are incapable of doing because they are much older, right? And so, therefore, all that stuff is going to move. Where will that move? That will move to India. Okay. Um, so, India will enjoy this huge gap, this advantage, at least through 2040 till the time that you are going to be there in the active workforce and beyond. <clears throat> but more important is the last line is that you need to develop the right skills for this ever-growing market. And I think the whole uh, today's discussions has been around what kind of skills, etc. Some of the skills we'll talk about after this, but we just wanted to stay at this point to say what is demographic dividend, and I think that's what it is. 